All right, this dream is just coming up now. Here we go. Hang on a second. What's that, darling? Probably is. Hey, hang on, everyone, just a second. Homeschooling, it's all going ahead. Okay, it's back. I'm back. I'm back. Um, it says the settings are good for YouTube. I don't know if that's the case. Sorry, one more thing. I missed last week. Could you have a link for the class, Gregory? I have a link for that class. It's in the, what do you call it? The announcements. The announcement is it's just permanently linked on the YouTube channel. Let me just have a see. Thank you. Um, a little guy saying, wishing you all the happy days hello um i will get that link for you right now it should be a playlist playlist what is this 2021 manage control networks it's got this control here we go this is where every video turns up each week all right so i'm assuming that the uh youtube is working i don't know um so let me know if it's not. Uh, and then I will just share my window to my screen. Here and hopefully we're good to go. It's looking good. Excellent. Okay. Simpler is the way we're going to spend our day. We'll use some of these techniques that we've had so far to create some more audio so the first thing we've got to do is grab a clip we need some audio to sample otherwise we can't sample so let's do that i'm gonna go and i'll find a thing in the ableton um where are we sound 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 sounds i want a string sound let me have a look Samples, packs, core library, samples, one shots. Oh, let's go for a vocal. Nah, nothing there. Um, sorry. Instrument bass could be really good. All right, so if you can't find this sample, the way to find it is go command F bass A1, like that. Grab this, you can hover on the top of a MIDI file like this and then just drop it down the bottom. Once you've dropped it down the bottom, it automatically configures it into a sampler. This is a device in Ableton called Simpler, actually. So we have two samplers available, Simpler and Sampler. We'll go through the Simpler one, and then I'll show you the very simple thing to convert it to their full, fully-fledged, multi-sampled. Um, you can do multi-key samples. You can do velocity layer sampling, and it's got an FM synthesis engine in it as well, which is insane. Let's use simpler straight out of the gate. <clears throat> Please tell me if um, anything is not showing up on either Collab, Ultra, or 
here we go YouTube here's the YouTube link for people who might have arrived even later than me if you can click up here to turn your key keyboard on you can use your keyboard on your computer like that to play when you're sampling one of the first things you've got to do is determine what is the pitch of the sample. I don't know what the pitch of this sample is, so what I'm going to do is Command F and use a tuner, and then just play a note and see what it is. It looks like it's an A flat. This one gives me an even clearer. I'm playing a C and I'm hearing an A flat. Not going to be good unless I want to do some experimental stuff. So, way the way to get around this is go to controls and put the transposition on. And I want this to be a C. Doesn't matter which octave. You notice there it's actually between a B and a C. So I can use the detuning here just to push it up about 30 cents. About half a tone. Maybe I'll just take that fourth semitone, reset the detuning, and just pull it back in tune a little bit. Cool. We've got an in-tune sample when I play a C on the piano keyboard, which, if you're using the musical typing keyboard, is an A. It's the letter A. My mistake. Okay, so once we're in the here, we've got a standard uh, or a bunch of different controls. We've got modes over here. This is a classic playback mode. It supports polyphonic playback, polyphonic meaning more than one note at a time. And you can also have sustained looping portions and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. The one shot uh, allows just monophonic playback. You use the one shot for um, loops or drum hits. And then slice allows us to, if we're using a drum hit, where it allows us to slice up different notes to different keys. For the moment, we're going to use classic. We've got some simple gain, all of these things here. If I was to enable looping, what that's going to do is keep the length of the sample when I warp it here the same regardless of the um, the pitch because when we use a sampler, when it speeds things up, generally the sample will get shorter in duration. I can illustrate this pretty well. No able to sound. Thank you, Jemison. I know why, menu bus, menu bus, MacBook, look back, audio. Have we got audio now? Audio, here's a go. Thank you, Ethan. Thanks very much for letting me know. So we, we haven't done anything yet. So this warp function, I might show you how this works. Uh, by recording a quick clip of audio and I'm just going to do that and I'll show you if I go I select my microphone I'll just do some spoken word no you can be you can rest easy I'm not going to be uh, what's the words reciting poetry I'm just going to speak some words to go what's two words that I can read off my screen studio time so, if I drag, I'm just going to show you what how the time stretch works. So you don't have to go to all the trouble. This I'm just dragging this into a little thing here. I'm going to start out like here. That should be studio time. Studio time. You'll notice studio time. Studio time. Studio time. Studio. studio. It's always studio time. changing. If I go faster. Thanks, Louis. Studio time. So it's speeding up and slowing down. If I am to set the warp mode, something to Complex Pro would be a good one. Now, studio time. If I play studio. different octaves. Studio time. 
It's just doing a little bit of thinking there, it would appear. It's our time. It's keeping the whole thing in... What have I got with my buffers? I think I've got some insanely short buffer time, I do. So now... Studio time. Studio time. Studio time. It maintains studio time. And I can play chords with my voice saying studio time. Studio time. Studio time. Studio time. So with the warping enabled, it allows us to time stretch. It doesn't matter what pitch we play. Studio time. The rhythm is maintained. Studio time. Studio time. Studio time. Without the warp, it will have three different versions of the sample playing out at different times. Like that. Studio time. Studio. Studio time. So, Louis, hopefully you're back up off the floor and you aren't convulsing presently. If you like, I could make you a mixtape of this. Just studio time. Studio time. Studio. Like that, and I could loop it for you and um, send it through to you. You can go to sleep to it, perhaps. You need it. Maybe what I'll do, Louis, is rather than say studio time, I'll just say, you are beautiful, and just loop that over and over for you. Studio time. Well, hopefully that clarifies what it is we're doing here. We do have the ability to adjust formants as well. Studio time. Studio time. Studio. 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 Formants are the parts of our voice, the harmonics in our the voice content. Studio time. As studio time. things go up, as you pitch shift up, the formants of your voice go up and it gives us that kind of um, chipmunk sound. As um, your voice is pitched down, the formants and the harmonic of your voice also get tuned downwards, which gives you a deeper sounding voice. With this formants adjustment, studio time. it actually allows you studio time. to try and, although we're changing the pitch, studio, 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 studio. It's trying to make it sound. If I turn the formants off, you'll notice that studio, 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 studio. My voice studio starts time. to take on studio. that chipmunk Mickey Mouse studio. kind of. Studio, studio, studio. This is the original studio pitch. time with the formants on. Studio doesn't time. change, but as we go up an octave, studio time. It's trying to maintain that formant content, and there's also some other little studio time parameters studio here time. that affect how the um, spectral characteristics of the sample. Try lower values when using very high pitch samples and higher when you're using low stuff. This is trying to... Studio time. Studio... There we go. All right, so let's get back to our bass. Hopefully now, for this instrument, I'm not going to in introduce any warping. Warping um, is a time stretch. Time stretching is always destructive. I don't necessarily want to do that. I've got other ways that I can sh create time stretch. And if we go really deep down the rabbit hole today, I can show you how to, yeah, go do some time, how time stretching, the algorithms for time stretch actually work, which is, I don't know, I find all this stuff fascinating. So let's studio, t get out of studio time and go back to our base. Simple. We're not doing anything crazy. Where this all starts to get interesting for me is where we manipulate filters. We manipulate, manipulate the ADSR. So that instead of hearing that note, perhaps we could increase the attack time. So we get a so, slow, gentle. We have also got the ability to loop it. That loop generation is going to be here. Sorry, the looping is there. That's the overall length. We can set how long the loop is. And the position of the loop is... Not quite as, we, this crossfade is going to be very helpful. It's not quite as sophisticated as it, as it is. We can only just adjust for length. And it's going to loop these areas. But you're getting it right from the start. So maybe I'll move it back a little bit. Turn the volume up. 
It's all got some kind of strange sound. You can manipulate these a little bit. In Sampler, you get more thorough ability to set the exact light, l uh, length and things like that. This is the number of voices available. We can go up to 32. We could have a single mono. I'm going to go... I'm just going to put it up to 32. And I'm going to try to make... I think this is going to work for a kind of... What would you call it? Um, organ sound. I think this will be alright for an organ sound. Now that we've got just a, a rough sound set up there, it doesn't matter that you're following along. We, we can use our standard modulation things, uh, LFOs. We could use the LFO to control the pan like this. I'm actually hearing quite a nice, just when by doing that, I'm hearing quite a nice little um, electric piano sound emerge. It's not bad. Let's have a look at the square wave. Rather than going 100%, let's just use the square wave to modulate the panning. No, it's not doing what I wanted to do. I'm going to do it on the volume to get a tremolo. Maybe I'll go back to this one. Cool, cool, cool. It's giving me something to work with. We still got the pitch envelope that we had within um, Operator. It works the same way. We start out with a elevated pitch and we go back down to the sustain decay, the usual ADSR. It's set to zero at the moment, so it's not going to do anything until I push it up. And you can use this for those little tiny I'm going to set the zero get just a little bit of a a knock at the start of the note 